Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at something a lot of you have been asking about, the Yoga 72015. This is the larger version of the 72013 that we looked at the other day, which is uh, very thin and light. This one is a lot bigger and a lot heavier, and you can see what the two of them look like right next to each other here. So there's definitely a size increase here uh, going from the 13 to the 15, but if you're looking for more screen real estate, a little more horsepower, and perhaps a GPU, uh, this one might be the one to look for. Now, like the 13, this is a two-in-one, so you can flip the screen around back like so. You can also uh, put it into tent mode or have it work as a huge tablet that weighs a ton. Uh, but you can do all these things with this device, which is a little bit more than you might be able to do with uh, similar 13 or 15-inch laptops from other manufacturers. And we'll be taking a closer look at this and how it performs and all the other stuff we usually look at in just a second. I do want to mention, though, in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a closer look at the hardware now. The build quality on this is really nice. It's an all metal case. It's got uh, some really nice fit and finish to it. It feels pretty rugged and uh, really well put together. The screen does bounce a little bit more than I would like. So as you're uh, touching the screen here, you can see it is bouncing back at me. So that is one thing that I noted with it. Uh, this version has a 1080p display. Uh, there is also a version with a 4K display. Uh, that will impact your battery life though. So with the 1080p display, we're only getting about five or six hours of battery life in my testing, doing uh, web browsing and some light video watching and that sort of thing. Uh, you'll get less with that 4K display. So you may want to think very carefully about uh, which display you want to get yours configured with. Now this starts at $999 and that uh, comes with an Intel quad core i7 KB Lake processor. It's the 77HQ, eight gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD. Uh, this one has a GPU, a separate graphics processor, which is nice for video editing and games and some other activities. And it's a NVIDIA GTX 1050. It has two gigabytes of video RAM, so a little less than what you might see in uh, some of the lower cost gaming laptops, but uh, still decent enough to play some games on it, yet still have something that's a little thinner and lighter than perhaps you might see with a uh, cheap gaming laptop. So it is a well-constructed device and you're paying more for uh, having the build quality here and the smaller size. Now this one with the GPU uh, costs $1,149 as configured. Uh, there is a version with a 4K display on Best Buy that I'll link to that goes for about $1,250, give or take, depending on what sale is going on. So you can get in, a, in the door for under $1,500 with a uh, 4K display, which will look a lot nicer, but uh, you will take a battery hit with that. Now, I was surprised by how heavy and bulky this one is compared to the 13. I thought they would try to make it a little thinner uh, to kind of keep that same design language here, but this one is a lot bigger and it's also a lot heavier, 4.4 pounds or two kilograms. You're gonna be lugging around quite a bit with you as you are uh, walking around with it. Additionally, uh, there's a rather large power adapter here too. So this, there's a lot to travel with with this thing and with the battery life being what it is, uh, you'll need to keep this power adapter close by. Uh, so that power adapter here plugs into the side. You also have a USB 3 port over here, a headphone microphone jack on that side. And then on the other side here, you've got another USB 3 port. You've got a Thunderbolt USB-C connector. We'll do some testing of that Thunderbolt port on my extras channel with an eGPU in a couple of days, so stay tuned for that. And then of course, you've got your power switch here. Now this uh, port uh, will do video output to DisplayPort or HDMI with an adapter. It will not do, though, uh, power delivery, so you can only charge it with the power connector on this side. So the other one, you could actually charge the entire laptop with its USB Type-C connector. This one is using that for just data and video. So bear that in mind, another uh, flaky implementation of this USB Type-C Thunderbolt uh, standard here. Uh, there is a fingerprint reader on the front, works just as well as it does on the 13. I am very fond of the keyboards on this generation of Lenovo laptops. They had done some flaky stuff last year with the shift key. They fixed that and it actually types better than it did before as well. This one has a slightly deeper travel to it than the 13 inch does. So it is a little bit better to type on, but I'm quite pleased with how the 13 inch types and this one feels very similar. The trackpad also feels very similar too. So it is a, a similar experience from an input uh, standpoint and uh, the keyboard here is backlit. And given you've got that quad core i7 processor on here, you're not going to have any problems running Word or Excel or anything uh, else like that. Uh, web browsing equally is pretty nice on here as well. We're running a 1080p 60 video for my YouTube channel. Uh, no drop frames going on here. Everything is very smooth and uh, responsive, which is what I would expect this class of laptop to deliver here. So 
as you can see, uh, pages here render in very, very quickly. We've got a uh, wireless AC on board, of course, and everything feels like it should for a laptop of this class. And on the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 147.9 running in Google Chrome. That compares very favorably to the Yoga 720, which has a dual core i5 processor, and that one came in at 127.9. That test measures how well uh, the computers can handle the modern web, doing a lot of JavaScript and a lot of page rendering, and uh, you can see the difference that having that quad-core i7 processor can make. All right, so let's see how this GPU performs on this computer. We'll load up Grand Theft Auto V first, and I'll scroll through the settings that I have configured on it. I've been trying to get the best frame rates possible here, so I'm uh, turning everything down to see what we can end up with here. You can also see what we have for the advanced settings, and I'll pop back out to the game here. And with the uh, settings largely turned down, we're at about 75 or so frames per second, which is pretty darn good. Of course, the game doesn't look as good as it would if we turned on some of those more advanced graphics settings, but if you're looking looking for frame rate, you can definitely get here with the uh, 1050 GPU. And NVIDIA has made some pretty uh, staggering improvements in mobile graphics performance. So this performs a lot better than last year's 960 processor did. So I'm pretty impressed with uh, this line of GPUs. And it's actually performing in line, as you'll see in a few minutes, with what we've seen on other laptops also running with this chip. Let's take a look at a few other games. All right, so next up is Rocket League, and you can see what I have for settings here. So everything pretty much cranked right up on this one. We'll back out of the menu again here, and I'm seeing frame rates at around uh, 100 frames per second or so, sometimes into the 80s and 90s, but still well above 60 here. So I think uh, for these kinds of games, uh, you're also going to do quite well. Things that are not as stressful, perhaps, as GTA 5 is, and uh, in this case, you can get uh, full graphic quality here on the 1080p display at a decent frame rate. I should also note the display, at least the 1080p display, it looks really nice. The color is decent on it. Uh, adequate brightness, probably not as bright as my Mac is, but uh, brighter than I think I saw with the 13. So I'm uh, very pleased with the display quality and the uh, viewing angles are also really decent on it as well. I think you'll be quite pleased with that. So one last game to check out. Yes, it's a shiny screen. We're looking at Doom. Uh, here are the settings that I put in for that one. So we'll go over here to advanced so you can see what we got for that. Uh, so I have things kind of cranked up a little bit. I was trying to get uh, the best image quality I could get while still getting close to 60 frames per second here. So we're hovering around 45 to 50, depending on what's going on in the scene and uh, generally working pretty well here. So not bad for Doom. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,758. And graphically, that puts it right in line with another GTX 1050 powered machine, the Dell Inspiron 7000 that we looked at a few weeks ago, which is one of those big, bulky, inexpensive gaming laptops. I think it costs about $800 or so. Uh, similar graphic scores. This one edged out a little bit better on the processor side because it does have the i7 versus the i5 that we saw in the Dell. Uh, but this one's also a lot smaller. Even though it costs more, uh, you're paying for the, in, the engineering and the industrial design here to get uh, that kind of performance in a smaller package. So this weighs about a pound less and is uh, smaller. Even though it's still a bit bulky, it's less bulky than those cheap gaming laptops are. I also want to point you to the Lenovo Y520 that I also looked at a few weeks ago. That's another big bulky laptop, but it has the 1050 Ti GPU. So if you're curious what the Ti will do versus the regular 1050, uh, you can see here on the test, we got uh, 15 frames per second versus 10 on the first graphics test and uh, 13 and a half versus 9.2 on the second test. So you will see better performance out of a 1050 Ti, but I'm not sure uh, you could get something like that into a small form factor like this one without having cooling issues. And speaking of which, a lot of you are always curious about the thermal uh, performance on these things. So under load, uh, running these same benchmarks over and over again in the 3D Mark stress test test, I got a 98.7% on that one. So that is a passing score, but it does indicate we'll have uh, some performance drop off as uh, you tax that GPU over long periods of time, but not significantly so. But you'll definitely want to keep those vents clear here on the bottom in order for that to maintain that level of performance. And if you've got some big video files to play back or edit, I think you're going to do just fine on here. We've got our usual test file, which is a 140 megabits per second 4K HEVC 10-bit file. Uh, this is basically what they're putting on uh, 4K Blu-rays these days, and it's playing back just fine here with no drop frames, uh, really decent image quality, and it would look even better if we had the 4K version of this laptop. So I'm not concerned about its performance there. Uh, these seventh-generation Intel chips have the ability to play back this crazy video 
particular format in hardware. So good stuff here, good performance, no problems or concerns. It also is able to play back uh, lower bitrate files like these Blu-ray MKV files I like to watch on my computer. It doesn't have an optical drive for this, but if you can uh, rip the movie off and there are ways to do that, uh, you can get a, a decent Blu-ray experience on here as well with a very nice display. The sound quality is okay. It's got speakers on the bottom, which I don't really like on laptops just because the sound varies based on what kind of surface you have it on, but uh, there's decent stereo separation to it. It is loud, uh, but not fantastic. So I think if you're looking for an audiophile experience, you'll probably want to connect up a pair of headphones to it, but uh, as speakers go, uh, they work pretty nicely on here. So overall, this is a decent premium 15-inch laptop that also doubles as a drawing surface because you can uh, flip it down into tablet mode here and start drawing on it. While it's not practical perhaps to walk around with something this big and bulky as a tablet, uh, you can put it down flat on a desk, uh, get out the pen that is not yet available for this, and start drawing on the screen so you can do all of your artwork and then flip it back out and get your laptop again. That's a really compelling option, I think, for college students. Uh, when that pen is available, I'll try to do some testing with it. It apparently is compatible with Wacom pens from what I have read, but I don't have one of those either, unfortunately, so I'm not going to be able to demo uh, that experience to you. But I think that is an edge that this one has over other premium 15-inch laptops, which are just laptops. This one uh, is something you can actually draw on. You could even do something like this where you still have access to the keyboard and trackpad, yet uh, can draw on the screen. And then when you factor in the GPU for better graphics performance, I think you've got a pretty decent creative tool here that uh, might be worth looking at. And it's not all that expensive given what you're able to do with it. Now, what did surprise me about this, though, is that it feels very different than the 13-inch version of this. So I have a MacBook Pro 15 that I use a lot. My wife has the 13-inch version of the new MacBook. They feel very similar. They have a very similar design language. They're both very thin and light. Uh, this one is thin and light, the 13-inch version, but the 15 is not. It's very big and bulky and heavy. Uh, not any heavier or bulkier than other 15-inch premium laptops out there, but it is definitely a different feeling computer than its 13-inch sibling is. So I think if you're looking for portability, uh, the 13 is probably worth the uh, consideration just given how light it is. It still supports the pen functionality like the 15-inch one does and a lot easier to walk around with. It also has a much smaller power brick than the 15 does, but if you want the horsepower, uh, this one has it. And again, uh, you've got that pen functionality which I think will be of interest to folks, but the battery life may not be as good as other premium 15-inch laptops out there. So that's going to do it for now on the Yoga 7 2015, and this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger, Brian Miller, Mr. Morse, and Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.